in my closet doing a closet confession at the same time because I'm sure I'm going to go through a lot of um, memories as I kind of start purging out my closet. So I've never quite figured out my closet. I have a little walk-in closet and it's actually quite spacious, but for some reason the, the room is a little narrow, so I can't hang a lot of stuff in there. Kind of without any rhyme or reason, threw stuff into the living room closet, which only has a couple of things that are maybe like things I don't reach for as often. I really love the built-in drawers and this little vanity section where I keep my accessories. It's a complete and utter mess right now. And I'm also just tackling clothes in this video. Accessories will have to live in another video because it's a lot of stuff. And I have a hallway closet which houses my shoes that are like a little bit more of a daily walker. I also keep my coats in there, but it's kind of a Monica closet because I also stuff like every single press thing I get. The first step is to clean out the closet. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna do a couple piles here. I will have the keep, donate, and depop pile. Okay. There's a place that I always seem to find. I made this piece when Wes and I went to Vietnam for the first time in I think 2015, and it's completely fit to my measurements. And it does spark joy. It doesn't spark a whole lot of joy for me to keep it, but it's hard to maybe get rid of it because it's so specific to my body. I tend to buy a lot of beautiful formal dresses and a lot of them sometimes fall into the formal wear of me not actually getting to wear it that often. A really common question I got was what is one of my favorite go-to pieces? For me, it is a black blazer and I have to say this is probably my favorite one. I found this at Wasteland and I love it because it just has such a good shape. It throws on so well. It drapes, it has big old sleeves and I think this is one of the pieces when I really started to see my style develop. One of the questions I got asked was, what's the percentage of pieces in my closet that is new versus vintage versus secondhand? I used to vintage shop a lot more when I was in college. And nowadays I spend most of my clothing budget on the real real. I always buy everything secondhand. One, because even when something's super marked down, like I still can't really afford it. I would say 85% of my stuff is secondhand, 10% of my stuff is vintage, and I would say 5% of my clothes are new. Most of that new stuff are either gifts or they're from Uniqlo because I like to buy my basics from there. This is a vintage set. A little silk Tommy Bahamas. And it reminds me of Fear and Loathing, so I love this piece. I love buying sets. I have another video coming out on how to search on the real real, so I will say a lot of my secret shopping ways on that video. As far as the oldest thing in my closet, definitely these Levi's. I remember buying these when I was in college. I've had these for 12 years now. They were the, the first pair of 501s I've had before like Instagram turned the 501 into like a thing. They were featured many times on my original blog. All of the destruction on the jeans were made from me wearing it almost every other day. I salvaged them. I took these to Atelier and Repair. This is an interesting skirt. It was like a $12 skirt I got at Uniqlo. When I think of things that I gravitate towards, this is definitely one of them. And it still brings me a lot of joy and a lot of wear. I do love this dress and it's this beautiful velvet color and I got it tailored to me so it fits me like a glove. I just never get a chance to really wear it. It can only get worse before it gets better. Yeah, another beautiful blazer. This is a vintage Chanel blazer that I found at Wasteland. It was a little bit of a pretty penny, but for vintage Chanel, 300 isn't too bad. I'm really sad because I took it to the dry cleaners and they defaced my jacket. So now the value has gone way, way down. Regardless, you still spark joy. One of my favorite pieces that I think has like a very high cost per wear, this little Balenciaga shirt. It's made of like this beautiful 
silk jacquard. I have definitely have worn the crap out of this shirt and it continues to be one of my favorite quintessential pieces that I think very much define me. 2016, I was 26 and I feel like around that year is when I really started to develop my style and I think some of it was just kind of trying to disconnect my thoughts and feelings from what I was seeing and just honing in a little bit on what I liked and once I was able to figure out a couple of my key pieces like this piece, I think I saw my style taking shape and it started to become an unfiltered process, so. This is insane. Is it insane, Ted? This is insane, you guys. Probably host our own flea market. So are you just like asking yourself, like, does this give you joy? Yeah. Does this give you joy? Um, not necessarily because it reminds me of the cold, but I know I need it because it's the only puffer jacket I own. So you don't need it. <laughs> no, I need it. I, yes, it does it bring me give joy. You joy. Yes, it brings me joy. Oh my god, this is going to take you all day. My favorite pieces are from the Coach Gary Baseman collection. One, it was such a cool collaboration and Two, it was just kind of a point in my career where to have the recognition to work with a brand like Coach was really fun and they really trusted me to create content for them. They will be an heirloom for sure. So this is an original Realization PAR sample. This is the Christie dress. I find this piece really special because I was hanging out a lot with Alex when she first started the label. So it's just really impressive to see her grow the brand and also to have a relic of when it all started. I had a lot of good memories in this dress and during this time of my life. <laughs> So one of the kookier pieces in my closet is this vintage Todd Oldham dress suit. And it's one of those pieces I like always almost want to get rid of because it's so loud and obnoxious. This one I found at a vintage shop in Palm Springs. It was one of my first fun trips to Palm Springs. So being able to hold on to this souvenir. This Isabelle Morant dress I loved and I wanted to get rid of it for a while because I just don't wear this anymore. But someone was like, it's your, it's your YouTube icon. It's precious. And I was like, you're right, it's precious. And then I changed my, my dress and my icon, so thank you. This is now my profile photo. This is during the time I was consulting at Glossier and sample sales are very big in New York. So I remember hearing the buzz of, oh my God, protagonist is having a sample sale at the line. And then on our lunch break, I went with Kelly and we went and we got a bunch of stuff. Such good memories from those two weeks in New York. So one of the pieces I regret buying has to be this beautiful mail piece. It was just so expensive. But I was with Weston in a city and I was just feeling spenny. See, I don't mind spending a lot of money if I know I can get it back in return later. Like Chanel always has a really good resale value, so I don't mind spending the money. But for contemporary brands like this, it's a little hard. Since I'm not gonna get my money's worth, I'm gonna try to get my cost per wear out. I am a true sucker for vintage designer blazers. This is probably the piece I feel the most sexy in because it has shoulder pads, it has low plunge, it is Definitely one of my favorite pieces. It's a lot of joy. How much joy is that joy pile? Wait, that's what you're keeping? Right here is what I'm keeping. <laughs> it's, and this is what she's not keeping. What is this? <laughs> it's a little too tall. Okay, you know what? That doesn't bring me joy. <laughs> See, I'm already helping you edit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That brings a lot of joy. This brings very much joy. So speaking of clothes that, that I personally love, but other people think are ridiculous, are these two pieces. So I bought this piece in Miami at a vintage shop. It's just going to sit in a garment bag until, I don't know, it has a night out for me to wear it. This is also another one of my favorite. It is a sheer purple Chanel jumpsuit and I got this one off the real real. It is a very groovy piece. I love it very much and I will put it back in a garment bag because it was just sitting in my Monica closet. I'm actually making decent progress. I am chasing the light though so it might get dark by the end of the video but I have all the stuff in its Depop suitcase. This is all stuff that needs to be hung, and those are all the stuff that needs to be folded. Okay, so I think she says dark to positive. So basically try to make it longer than shorter, and then um, 
darker to lighter. So I will finesse that right now. I'm running into a problem because this part is so dark. So I actually think I'm gonna go long, short here so that these end up in the dark corner. Hold it here, push it down, fold it into thirds. If you do it right, it sits up right on its own. All right, you're gonna fold a lot faster <laughs> before so this light stuff. dies. Wow. So basically, I have my shirts, short sleeve, long sleeves, tank tops, and sweaters. Dresses that don't deserve hangers or couldn't be hung. Skirts and pants in my denim. I'm such an idiot. I forgot to show you guys the results. So this is like a month later. I've been able to maintain this beautiful wardrobe. So that was part one of my closet clean. I still have all of this to do in the next video. All of my bags, all of my shoes. I am going to tackle my workout gear, which doesn't need to be on this video. I have another drawer right there that's mine. And that's all like the stuff I wear around the house. <sighs> okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Nice things. Thank you. I feel like I've seen this quite often. Love a good dress. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs>